All right then. So this is our painting project for March, the Tarmega River at Amarante. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly, but a lovely scene for us to paint with the part of the town or the small city on the far side of the river. Quite a wide river, beautiful reflections as well. A fairly still day. We're looking into the light, or the light might be, we were thinking on Pat Chat, the light was top left. So there could be some light hitting the tops of these rooftops there on that side. There's these really nice reflections and something that attracted me to the scene was the connection of those reflections with the small craft on, on this side of the river. So nice, uh, simple boats to, to draw paint with their reflections as well. We have the bridge. We had a question earlier about the size of those arches. The middle one might be a little bit bigger, but don't get hung up by those. Just try and make them symmetrical. And there are three there, one, the middle one, and then the right-hand one. Bit of the town on the right-hand side, bright sunlight hitting the bank on that right-hand side there with the grass and a nice sort of cobble path with little bits of weed and stuff growing in it. We've got a figure there, a figure. On Patcha, I was thinking, make that into a fisherman as well. So um, a slight change with, the, with that figure. Other changes. Other changes I contemplated was, well, top left corner, this little bit of foliage does, doesn't really do much for me. Uh, it, I suppose it is quite nice having that light against the dark, but the danger is if you've, you've got that bright green there against the darker green of the far side, you could, if you're not careful, you could make that light green look as if it's part of the, the trees on that far side. And it was sort of, depending on how vivid you go with that green, it could sort of bring it, bring it forward. So I'm, I'm in favour, if you imagine this bit of open sky here, Let's imagine the overhanging tree. I think there's there's a lot of trees on this side of the bank, and we're we're under the the shelter of a of a large tree. Let's imagine there's some foliage coming in into that top right corner. The other thing that we found out when we edited the photo was that this light area here almost vanished. It almost disappeared. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna give a lot of prominence to this large white uh, strip of reflected light there, but I will have I will have a few horizontal little lines of a light towards the end. I'll put that in towards the end. And again, on Patcha, we had an interesting conversation about alternatives to white gouache. So go back to that recording if you want to um, delve into the the alternatives to to white gouache. Yeah, a little bit of dappled shade down the bottom right hand corner, keep the right hand side fairly simple, keep the buildings simple as well. Well, for me anyway, uh, there's not a lot of perspective to deal with here. Values, values, values are very important. Let me just stop sharing on that. I'll go back to me. So I was asked on Pat Chat, was I gonna do a value study? For this and I said no <laughs> because from my point of view I get distracted with if I've done a, a value study I get distracted by having having to look at the source photo and then I'm sort of toggling between looking at the, the value sketch going to the photo backwards and forwards I get sort of a little bit confused so I like to keep things simple um, I suppose in my own mind, subconsciously, I've done that value study, but for the benefit of those of you that would appreciate some kind of idea about the values, then this is it. The lightest parts are going to be, hopefully you can make out the different areas of the composition, the lightest area is going to be the sky, uh, the little bit of water beyond the bridge, then the boats as well, the tops of the boats, the gunnels, 
the the thwarts, the seats there um, in the boat, keep that light. Then the next darkest, or still still keeping on the light side, would be the grassy bank here on that side, and this cobbly this cobbly path here as well. Then we are almost going into the darks. Now the town on the left, uh, the town on the left hand side, I think that's going to be one of the darker areas. And I've tried to show that with my cross fairly heavy density of cross hatching there. So quite dark in that area, quite dark on the right hand side. So generally dark, all right, that part of the town on that left hand side. Imagine little bits of light, little bits of light hitting the rooftops over there. I think that'd be quite attractive. There are some parasols over here. We look in the source photo. I'm not going to bother with that too much detail. There's a little rubber inflatable with a parasol on it. A couple of people having a good time in the middle of the river. I'm going to ignore that as well. So that's probably going to be the darkest area. Quite a nice tree on the left hand side of the bridge. I'm going to have that in there and there's quite a nice reflection that comes from that and then the actual reflection of the town it's dark but not as dark as the as the town and i'm leaning towards keeping if we're talking about warm versus cool so i've gone through light versus dark warm versus cool well the Far side will be fairly cool, and that reflection I think is going to be fairly warm for me. I believe the reflections they're sort of they're they're inheriting some of the color of the water, and I I think this river might be a little bit sort of not not a hundred percent clear, shall I say, a little bit silty, and there's little bits of debris um, floating on the surface as well as another dimension. I've so I've got the, the two boats there. I'm missing out that middle boat. It looks a little bit weird. And I think if you did include that middle boat, it's it looks different from the other two. And it might look a bit weird between the two. And you might have some difficulty in in making it stand out as a third, a third boat sandwiched in the middle there. I've got a a lone fishing person, fisherman, fisher, fisherwoman on that um, far side of the bank, maybe a little bit of action with a fishing rod. I'm just imagining a bit of, bit of fishing going on there. But something, again, that might be something quite dark, a dark figure um, against a fairly dark, these, these reflections, similar value over here, not ultra dark, but this this figure would be darker than the reflection and maybe towards the end a little bit of highlight on that on that figure as well so, so that's my value sketch i'm now going to put that away for me i'm not going to look back at it it would just it would just um distract me materials i normally go over my materials don't i so normal uh, saunders waterford uh, watercolor paper that i use and and uh, have recommended it for, for a number of years. And this is 300 grams, 15 inches by 11 inches. The colors are from Mark Chapman in the UK, and they're, they're quite good um, uh, professional grade paints, neutral tint, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit dirty, uh, spring green, be using that for that right hand bank, um, viridian green, cobalt green, not sure if I'll be using much of that, uh, cerulean blue, cobalt cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, English oxide or light red, cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. There's a few gouache colors down in the bottom right. I've got lavender, which is quite an opaque pigment. There's quinacridone gold, a lemon yellow light gouache and white gouache. Three mixing wells. Brushes, I would describe those as I go through, but it's a normal, a normal um, uh, bit of some brushes that I use. Let me just check and see if there's any questions. Right, 
Then let me start with the drawing. So I'm not going to uh, display the, the source photo much. Uh, you've got access to it, but if somebody asks me a question specific to it, I will, I will, I will go through that um, and bring that up on screen again for you. The first part of the drawing is always very important. Uh, where, well, particularly uh, drawing in the focal point or drawing in the horizon line or getting it right, uh, the top parts of the composition, making sure they've got enough space for the sky. And that's where I'm going to start in the top left corner, just roughly drawing in an outline of those those trees in the top left corner. And then we come down into some buildings, more geometric shapes. Then we come further down, we have the tree, that prominent tree on the left-hand side of the bridge. And then the bridge itself, uh, let's get that in sort of about there and it's it's pretty much horizontal it does it does slope down a little bit in the photo but let's let's keep things simple and we'll make that horizontal horizontal ish up the right hand side is the other side of the town again a, a few geometric shapes of some buildings and some trees coming towards us now the water's edge on the far side uh, let's get in the height of the bridge first of all which is around about uh, there something like that and then going over to the left hand side of the bank the river comes down it slopes down a little bit all right to the to the left hand side and there's some trees right on the water's edge bushes and shrubs going down to the water there are some buildings quite a lot of buildings which you can just about make out and then trying to think about the perspective for those buildings a little bit steeper a little bit steeper higher up uh, almost, almost level halfway down and those buildings go right across quite a few rooftops that we can see and some of those will be, for me, will be, I'm imagining the, the sunlight hitting some of those rooftops. A few verticals, they, a lot of these buildings, they sort of have sort of stepped tiers to them. So a few little vertical marks to to pick that back to the bridge and getting those arches right. And as Amy asked a very good question, are the arches the same width? Um, I think probably not. I think the the middle one is the the widest. Uh, let's start with the left hand side. Maybe draw a little bit lightly, first of all, just in case you want to change your mind with the placement. And then the middle arch, like that. The right-hand support looks like it's a little bit wider than that one there, but I'll make them the same. We can't actually see the the, the right-hand side of that arch. It's obscured by the foliage that, that comes down. And now we have the right-hand side of the bank coming down to our two simple, lovely boats. 
So these boats I will have not right, not right in the middle, sort of around about there. And they are fairly low, quite long, pointed at both ends, which makes them, I think makes them a little bit easier to, to uh, draw and paint. Let's get the furthest one in first. Now the, the far side of the boat is almost a straight line and it is fairly horizontal as well. So that's the furthest side of the furthest boat and then the near side is where we get that curve going like that the front or back of the boat there and then the water's edge and then the reflection now so that boat is fairly horizontal and then the next boat a little bit of a, a steeper angle and the One end of it is sort of around about there. Again, a fairly a fairly straight far side, and then the the near side. That's the one that's got the curve, and it gets a little bit more curvaceous uh if that's the right word towards that end so uh not so curvy and then that's the widest part of the boat there and then it gets goes up to that point one end and they're just these ends they're sort of up they're, they're lifted above the surface of the water so we can see a little bit of the water underneath and then We've got the, the actual reflection. They're, they seem to be identical, these boats. That's angled like that. So boat, reflection, boat, reflection. The grassy bank comes over here. There's a little bit of a sort of gully. Just here. So the grass, the grassy bank has a bit of shade there, has a bit of shade here. And then there's that path. Now, this is, I said there wasn't much perspective to deal with, but there is a little bit, bit of perspective. You're going to include that path, bottom right corner. And it doesn't matter if you get the angle right, because it's got a bit of, got a bit of character to this path. It's sort of, it's bumpy. It's not particularly, it doesn't look particularly straight, but the main angle, it's almost 45 degrees up like that importantly though the the left hand side has a bit of a border so let's get that width right with the the sort of blocks or bricks that are making up that left hand border going halfway down the bank this is where there looks to be some kind of little jetty or platform in there, platforms in there, different materials. So grass, platform, grass, grass, road. And then I'll get my, my fishing figure now. 
with the figure, there is a figure in the source photo. So you've got that for scale. Don't make the figure, uh, just watch out, don't make the figure too big or too small for where it is. Uh, I'm going to have the figure standing up more on the bank. So um, a sort of fishing type um, pose. And let me just see, where shall I put that figure? I don't want the figure right in the middle of that support there. So left or right, let's put them. Let's put the figure here. So just imagine the figures leaning back and and then so there's the head, uh, body leaning back and uh, arms. and the fishing rod um, coming away. So left, uh, right arm, left arm, if you get the idea. And I can just put in some cross hatching there. Hopefully that will look all right when we paint that in. All right, so this figure is sort of standing in that, that grassy bank area. Well, we're nearly there with the drawing. Double check those arches because they are an important part of the scene. And I think that left arch looks OK. This one needs to be a little bit more circular. That's why it's a good idea to draw those in lightly. The water's edge. The base of these arches, let's be a little bit clearer there with that and that and there. And then we can see the river snakes its way down, I guess, to, to the, the, the Atlantic. Um, we're sort of in, I think we're sort of in the middle of Portugal here. The far side of that river is like that. that's light there this is darker that's the far side we can we can just about see a little bit of that far side of the bank rising up with a building quite a prominent building on that um, right hand side I'll just get in the the thwarts in these boats. Just again, it's another little perspective thing, trying to get those right. The angle of these thwarts. And we can't really see much of them in furthest boat, something like that. Double check these boats, got these drawn right. Yes, and back to the back to the turn on that left hand side. Sort of half buildings, half trees up there there we go i think that's it the the edge of the reflections i'm not going to draw those in precisely but they're trying to imagine the horizon and then the of course the mirror image of what we see above and it's sort of like that there's the 
there's a reflection of that tree about there. And as I said earlier on, the, the attraction for me, the one of the attractions of the scene, was the connection of the reflections to those two boats there. And then we got the reflections of the bridge going over and then the darker, darker reflections over on that right hand side. I think that's it for my drawing. I'll just check and see if there's any questions. Oh, Helen is asking, what's the name of the thing in the boats? Uh, I I call, used to call them seats, but I think they're called thwarts. T-H-A, uh, T-H-W-A-R-T-S, something like that. Anyway, so we'll call them seats. Right, then let me start by painting. I am going to pretty much cover the whole scene in this first in this first wash except the <laughs> thanks Helen um, except the boats uh yeah so covering the whole scene sky I work my way from top to bottom covering the whole scene the brush I'm going to use is a mop brush this is a Tintoretto number six series one four one four zero seven a synthetic mop a, a sort of medium sized mop brush i reckon and let's get in that sky first of all which is going to be a very weak cerulean blue just a tiny bit of cerulean blue And let's make the sky fairly interesting. Now, the sun, I reckon, or we reckon from last patch, is up, is up that way somewhere. So we could get a little bit darker on the right-hand side. A little bit more intense with that blue. We get lighter towards the horizon. There we go, something light. Continue on down. Now on the left hand side, I want to put in the base color for the brightly lit roofs, which is going to be um, a light red or something like that. But first of all, let's just continue with this coolish theme over where the trees are going to be. And then the rooftops. Imagine that terracotta. Maybe a little bit of Amazon Crimson or some lower ones. And continue on down. There's the... So... The far side of the river is going to be white. I'll keep that the lightest. But I'll now, just wash out my brush, I'll now just come down with a continuation of the cool theme and the river, which is going to be, I'll choose a little bit of cobalt blue here. It can be any blue. Over to the far side. Down to the boats.
this is where you need to be fairly careful with the really careful with the brush to define that line. The bottom left corner here, this is where we can see the reflection of the sky. And that's where I want to put in some soft shapes of the clouds and the sky that we can see reflected. So just a few just a few lighter patches and then that's the reflection of the clouds and then a bit of actually a bit of ultramarine blue go for warmer blue for the reflection of the sky i'm going to mix in a little bit of lavender with this go a bit go a bit opaque-ish with uh, this sky. The so altering blue, a bit of lavender. And over to the right hand side. Keep that fairly soft in that area. If I'm not getting the white coming through, I'll just use a paper tissue just to get back some of those soft lighter clouds there we are right hand side we've got the grassy bank and the red the warm pathway and a little bit of timber i will use some spring green for the far side of this grassy bank and then now go a little bit a little bit brighter with the green I picked up some cabin yellow here up to the boats. Down to the water's edge. Then up to the path. And for the path itself is a very weak light red. I'm just putting in a few dabs of clear water, first of all, where it looks like the sun is, is beating down on that pathway and it's just creating some softer areas of light.
and there will be some dappled shade going over there as well so doesn't need to be too precise but that sort of warmish feeling to that pathway and then there's a little bit of decking or something going on between these two patches of grass so um, a little bit of light red there like that while this is still that's still fairly damp for me i'm going to get in the background hills and then that will be that first wash done now for those background hills something cool it looks quite a, a, a dark green in the source photo but let's go a little bit cooler so i'm using a viridian green here and where i mixed in that sky water wash just pick up a little bit of that um if it's not green enough just be very careful just make it a little bit more intense bit of cobalt blue And yeah, that should be okay. Little bit of the trees popping up above the bridge. And then the right hand side of the river, like that. And I'll just get that building in, that furthest building on the right-hand side, just that one there. Uh, something cool. There we go. A coolish building shape. The bridge is going to, again, obscure a lot of that um, paintwork. That is the first wash done. So try to keep that area quite bright in there. In fact, I could go in a little bit brighter with the with the green. Um, however, I can't now because that's it's gone past the stage where I can actually apply extra color in there. there. As you know, as you may know with watercolor, timing is of the essence. And I've left that a little bit too late. If I went in there with a little bit of extra color, I would the, the danger is I would lose the freshness of it. So it's better just to leave that dry. And then I can go in with some thicker, more opaqueish. Uh, bright paint try, just to try and get make that area quite quite bright well i'm just going to let that dry a little bit and then i will do the background town next which is really um that sort of 50 50 mix of the the trees and the buildings and painting around the brightly lit rooftops as well which is is actually fairly dry now let me just see if there's any questions no there isn't all right well that's yeah it's fairly dry right background trees on that left hand side well it's going to be a darker value to what i've done here this is quite dark as i said it's going to be quite dark over there on that side so let's get in those trees first of all viridian green i should mix it up here viridian green and a little bit of burnt umber viridian green 
burn timber, which is always, I think, it's always a, a good combination to get the right colour for these sorts of trees, these sort of deciduous trees. It's almost half and half, so equal measures of bridging green and burnt umber. Get there in the minute. Maybe a little bit of cobalt blue, we want to cool it down a bit. And then just test it. So I will keep mixing this as I go down. Sometimes I'll actually mix on the paper as well. Burnt umber, bridging green. A little bit of cobalt blue where I want to get in a bit of cool going into the area of the houses and then just paint around those to create their shape make this fairly solid cover up my pencil lines as well down to the water's edge on this side. Now I can go in darker than this later on when this is dry, just to get in a little bit of volume to those trees where where the darks are let's just continue along the river bank the shoreline Just following that line, sloping gradually up to the bridge. And then that prominent tree. Not too bright a green for this tree because it's further away than these trees. And we can see a little bit of the sky through the canopy. I've left a few little, little highlights there. Right, buildings. The buildings are well, there's, there's quite a lot of different colours going on. There's lots of pinks, blues, uh, um, creamish colours as well, dark creamish colours. Let's start at the top and have a have a sort of pinkish violet colour. Um, going with a little bit of Alizon Crimson and a little bit of Ultra Blue. And then just create the form of those buildings. 
we've got some buildings silhouetted against the sky. They're quite dark. So gradually coming down that right hand side, sort of stepping down. And then, oops, then these left hand buildings here. Cerulean blue. Just little slithers of light those rooftops connect with the trees let's just move my light a little bit so you can see what's going on um we're coming down to the bridge now connect with that tree now the bridge is going to be a sort of cool coolish color so cobalt blue and you get the color of that stonework and it's a bit darker it starts off light at the top and it gets a little bit darker towards the water's edge Need to go a little bit darker. So cobalt blue, bit of burnt sienna. Get the curve of the arches. So hopefully my drawing was good enough to follow those lines. A little bit darker towards the base of these arches. So I picked up a, a touch of neutral tint. And we'll connect we'll connect those arches, the bottom of those arches, with the water when we do the reflections. Okay, uh, foliage and buildings on this right hand side. So first of all, we can see some buildings up this right hand side. 
and they're going to be a bit darker in value to that furthest building. And some of these some of these buildings they've got little little spikes. Not sure what they are, but they're quite attractive. Um, a little bit of a warmer roof on one that's just there. And then darker foliage. Darker foliage in that area there. Back to my back to my combination of Viridian Green, Burnt Umber. Touch of spring green just to brighten this up a little bit. Because there are tiny bits of foliage catching the light, particularly up above, but then down towards the water's edge, we're getting a little bit darker where there's, there's less light coming through. Down to the water's edge then on this right hand side and the tree, the trees there, they sort of come over, hiding this right hand arch down to the water's edge. There's a little boat. just there. There's a little boat there, top of the boat. Let's just leave that unpainted and that could be that area. Come down to meet the Right hand back there, start of the the start of that brighter area, and that that's the sort of base where we need to go in a little bit darker and create some form of those buildings, windows, and things, and darker lines for the rooftops, just to give them a bit of extra definition. But I think that's all right. Uh, I need to fill in this area here again. This darker green. Down to the water's edge. Like that. Next then. I think we're ready for some reflections now. Which is a, a key part of the overall scene to get right. So we've got a lot of reflections here, of course. And the, the ripples in the water, they are quite thin and narrow there, but wider and more pronounced coming down to that bottom left-hand corner. So we connect, connect with the boats, and then I'm going to put in the, the darker values of the side of the boat and then the reflections of the boat. And then we'll have a, a little bit of a pause just to recap where we've got to. Does that bridge look okay? I think so. There we go. The void 
avoid the temptation to go in to what you've painted already and start mucking about with it. Um, like that area down there, it's at, it's at a stage where if I start mucking about with that now, I'm going to end up with a horrible mess. I need to let it dry and see. It's going to dry lighter, of course, as well. So I might find it's just a little bit, still a bit too light. I want that impact of the darkness over there. So let it dry, first of all. Don't don't disturb the surface. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to that. Right, reflections then, which I think is going to be fairly warm. Um, oh, Ben, sorry about the overhead light. Is that better now, Ben? Yeah, sometimes with the, the lighting, you can't always get it exactly, exactly right. How about that? A bit better. All right, reflections in this area here. I'll start off, I'll start off in the distance and we'll work our way gradually down to the bottom left hand corner keeping it like a a warm brown in a way a warm brown so let's have a burnt sienna uh, a little bit of cornacolone gold see what that's like burnt sienna and a little bit of altering blue, a warm blue, burnt sienna, and then with the same mop brush and not too much paint on the brush, so trying to. Um, get that get that uh, sharp edge there okay and then we'll start at the the bridge here connect with the bridge And you'll note in the source photo there's, there's gaps of light, little horizontal lines of light. There's that boat. Over the figure, the figure's going to be darker. So I've got to have very thin, hopefully horizontal lines here. A bit more solid. Over on the right hand side and darker as well. Right, connect to the left hand side of the bank. And then the tree. Just check my brush shape.
So more solid. Not too much of the gaps appearing. Actually, that tree, the reflection does come right down to these boats. So let's just do that. So. Perhaps a little bit of a disturbance where the fisherman is casting off. And a little bit darker with the reflections on the far side, burnt umber, neutral tint. A bit more water, a little bit lighter. And then we're hitting the reflection now, the right hand side of the town. So a bit of a, a jagged edge to that. And then complete this larger area. It doesn't matter if I left little, little bits of the paper that could be tiny waves catching the light or that debris floating on the surface. Now the important bit here is we're connecting with the, connecting with the boats. And then this important edge now. Up to the boat and connect again with that uh, boat reflection. There we go. Now these boats are, they're, they're different colors. There's, this one's more of a coolish color and this one's more of a yellowish color because it's getting some of the reflected, more of a yellowy greenish colors. It's picking up some of the reflections of the grass there. Um, I'll go, Fairly cool with the first boat. So cobalt blue. Um, I need it to be a little bit lighter than the reflections around it. So up to the pointy bit. And 
then the other boat dark green and then the reflections picking up that same warmish and then do this while the the hull is still damp so we've got a, a soft edge between the two Soft transition between the two. There's that one. And then this one, the near one. There we go. All right. I think now I will. This is still quite damp, actually. I'm going to put the hairdryer on this, and then we're going to get in some darker values in that background, try and create the form of those buildings a little bit more, and then turn attention to the right hand side. So I'll just get the hair dry out a second. Let me just see if there's any questions. Um, ben, is that a better angle for the light? It's It always happens in that first wash. And sometimes with the, the paper buckling as well, it can create sort of, like it's still a little bit buckled here. When I, when I, when I dry the paper, it's gonna go a lot flatter. So that, that, that sort of buckling can create some funny angles for the light here. So Apologies for that. Right, excuse the noise, but it, my microphone might might blank out. Here we go. Three, two, one. There we go. Right now, I'm going to change brush to a little flat brush to create some more form to those trees on the far side and pick up a little bit of darker green. A little bit of darker green. Not too much water on the brush. So, Viridian green, burnt amber, a little bit of neutral tint as well. And then just create the form of those trees on that far side. Ultrine blue, neutral tint, right. Just 
So it's gradually giving it a little bit more form and volume and darker, darker values as well. So there's not much paint on that brush. I'm, I'm, I'm always creating some dry brush marks and with the, with the medium text, the medium roughness of the paper I'm using, not paper here, cold press, gives it a little bit of texture. Right down to the, down to the water's edge and it is quite dark down there. Uh, a little bit of, a little bit of cobalt blue. And connect with the water reflections. Right, continue on. And it's quite dark. It's quite dark in this middle bit here as well. A little bit of a slope towards the towards the bridge. There's a hard edge there where there's some buildings. And then the tree itself, the middle part of the of the canopy and then come down to the water's edge on this far side. Um, something very weak on the far side. far river bank and use my fingers just if I've got too hard an edge use my fingers to smooth that out um, a bit more cobalt blue and a bit of coolness to some of those shadows Now for some detail in those buildings, a medium sized synthetic round. Now I'm not worrying about what color I've got here, just something fairly thick, fairly dark, not black though, not ultra warm, not ultra cool, just something in the middle to start creating some definition to the to those buildings so we'll create a few windows on this left hand side And then a few lines to just create the feeling of those levels of buildings and their balconies and rooftops.
few windows, not too many, and just also I guess um, not too not too perfectly spaced either, uh, randomly spaced. One in there. One in there. So with, with these vertical and horizontal lines, hopefully that's giving the impression of the different tiers. Not too much detail, it's sort of in the background. Um, just create the impression of those, of those distant buildings. Um, the arch, I've just noticed, we can actually just see the right hand side of the arch there and then we can see a little bit more of this one all right The bridge just create a bit more definition for that. Bits and pieces going on over there. Uh, back to my flat brush again and just create some vertical, vertical reflections coming from darker areas on that far side. Um, so not much paint on the brush, for example, here, there's that dark bush there, could have a little bit of a vertical there and there, and then this dark area here, that might have a bit of a dark reflection coming down um, there. There we go. Now, uh, the similar treatment over on this right hand side to define these trees a bit more. Uh, Radian green, ultramarine blue, Radian green, ultramarine blue. And right, starting from the Starting from the water's edge, we've got that. Got that boat there. Make it stand out a bit more. And then it go quite dark on this right hand side. So pile on a bit more of this thicker mix, ultra in blue, really in green. Don't get too hung up with the colors. You're, you're after more the values, get those right. And edges as well. Down to the water's edge. And then a little bit of detail to some of the buildings 
on this right hand side. Now the values here um, that they're, they're not as they're not as pronounced on the right hand side. We can just I mean for the example this building here that's too dark. Um, <laughs> it's too warm as well. Uh, cooler, cooler, less pigment. few little windows and then likewise just to make them more building like up there Make the bases of these arches just a little bit darker. There's a bit of shade that comes down there. We're nearly there. Um, let's create some more drama on the right hand side with, with uh, some thicker. I need to make sure my brush, my flat brush is clean and pick up some yellow and mix in some gouache with it, get a bit thicker. Yeah. Go a little bit, no, it's gone a little bit too brown. My cadmium yellow has been dirted up. It's been contaminated with something else from a previous painting. So a little bit more yellow. And then my spring green. And then And then a darker green for the, the shadow down here. So that viridian green and a little bit of well, mixed in with this darker shadow mix up here. Now this is again where we can create some definition to these boats. There we are, that's that little valley, and then the nearest bank here. Now, this 
grassy bank needs a little bit of reflection in the water. So back to my mop brush. And then just something to create the impression of some reflected grass down there. The pathway here needs some shadow on it, some dappled shade a sort of it's a warmish it's a warmish shadow uh so alan and crimson ultra in blue and then sort of haphazard pattern of the shadow going of that pathway and soften up soften up some of these edges with a, a damp brush Just teasing the edge. To get that feeling of dappled shade. You can leave a few little hard edges in there. Right, just Get in a bit more, a few more darker values in here to define the edge of that path. There we go. Right, boats. We've got more about the boats. They need to be, we need to get those thoughts in and a little bit of darker, darker, darker color into the markings on the boats and the water's edge. So first of all, the furthest boat and This shadow in between the, the thwarts, like that. And then the just define the back of the boat, the front of the boat. I'm assuming it's the back of the boat and the water's edge. Perhaps a little bit of marking. Along the, the gunnels of the boat and. The reflection. Right, then the. Next boat. Dark green, using that reading green again. Dark green and starting that far edge. A 
actually a deeper line there. And then darker value between the thwarts. Doesn't need to be the exact number that we've got in the photo. Here we go. And then the back of the boat, um, the water's edge as well. Bit more water on the brush. Here we go. Um, gradually taking shape. I think we're nearly there. We need, we need, um, what do we need now? Um, we've got to get the fishermen in. Dark, darker value than the reflections. So this fisherman, fisherwoman, whatever, starting with their head and A sort of lean, a, a sort of lean of the body, as they're maybe straining and getting in a large fish or something like that, and then the right hand. I assume the right hand leg, just creating some support to stop them going backwards. I need to connect the figure with the bank. So I've just used my fingertips. Now for the all important arms. And I can just about still see my my pencil drawing. And the head might be just a little bit too big, but I think I'm all right. Maybe there's a bits and pieces on the riverbank as well. Paraphernalia from the uh, the fishing equipment and rigger brush. Now I'm using a Levinson rigger brush. Uh, this fishing rod. Um, Then perhaps there's a bit of disturbance in the water here. Like that. Ah, the branches of the tree coming down. I'll stick with this, I'll stick with this rigger brush here. Yeah. This is quite good, brush like this, or you could use a sword brush. Um, a sword brush says he. Um, I don't have one immediately to show you, but shape like a dagger. They can be quite good brushes as well. Um, there we go. There's a, a sword brush or dagger brush. That's quite good for doing 
the, the thin twigs and branches and also the foliage as well. I'll stick with, I'll stick with this rigger brush. Uh, so loaded up a lot more now than I use for the fishing rod. And then just imagine the branches of a tree coming down. Connect with the connect with the buildings. Cross branches as well, not make them too perfect. I've got no idea what species of tree this is, but we get the general idea. And so this is, I'm using neutral tint, a bit of burnt umber, so it's something dark, right? And we can then, seeing as it's, I guess it's summer, we could then have a few little green leaves on the tree um some sort of mid green value just a few little clumps of foliage perhaps a bit more a bit more close up into the top right corner there connect with the Connect with the branches. Some outside of the area as well. Could be where the branch is just too thin to uh, see them. And that's going to give some context to the, the shadow there in the bottom right corner. Uh, I will create some definition to the pathway. So a line there, and then a few more lines just to denote the that side that kind of side border. And then a few little lines. The individual blocks, just think about the perspective again, and just a few little connecting lines there. Um, right, I think the final thing I'll do, and we were talking about this on Patcha, these, in the photo, you can see some very thin white lines. There's, there's quite a pronounced one there, but when you, um, when you edit the photo and you take out that, that kind of overexposure, um, then it, it becomes less pronounced. So we could... I could use my rigger brush with a bit of white gouache. I do have here somewhere a a white pastel pencil. So I use these two. I use these two methods for creating these little white horizontal lines going across the river. So you could do this freehand. Just creates a, a feeling of the of the uh, a bit of light hitting the surface of the water. We could have a little bit of light on the figure as well um, we've got that boat 
over there. And the other, the other way of creating those white lines is I've got it here, a pastel pencil. And, and also you could use, if you want to, could use a ruler to get that sort of straight, that straight horizontal line. So let's get one in there just to use this as another, make sure my pencil is, clean and then this gives a very subtle you know, another sort of way of getting in that that sort of light hitting the surface let's do a few more down here There we are. I think that's enough. Don't overdo it. Right. Uh, anything else? Um, I think could have gone a bit darker with those boats, but they're all right. It's, it's almost as if um, their light is almost that there's some some light behind us that's sort of bouncing back onto those boats, making them a little bit lighter. I think I got the value of those background background um background the sorry the background tan okay just I think I might need just create a little bit of definition to the shoreline um either with something light actually could just continue that that white to pencil. Be careful not to put too much detail on those background buildings. I will rub out those lines there these pencil lines and that'll get the make sure my rubber's clean um, that's going to get a bit more of a better edge looks dirty at the moment there we are Uh, the other thing, there's there's little bits of debris in the river, floating down the river. I've just a few of those. Some just use some gouache if you do want. Just a few little dots here and there. Here we go. Um, I think I am done. Uh, I did mention the weeds on the pathway. There's some that spring green mixed with the yellow. There we are. Gives it a bit more of a, a weathered appearance. The can I get more? There's blades of grass here. Spring green, mix it with my <laughs> my. Uh, Gouache there. Try and get a thick opaqueish green. Just 
just a few little blades of grass. Of course, that fisherman, you might not see the bottom of his feet. more water. There are these these lines show up a lot more against a darker background there like in that in that shade. There we go. I think that is it. Could have gone a bit darker with the sky reflections, but it's all right. It's it's OK. Hopefully we've got an impression there of the. Of the Tam Tamega River at Amarante in Portugal. So uh, thanks very much for watching, everyone. Um, I look for those of you on Patreon, I very much look forward to seeing your paintings. And those of you on here live, thanks very much. And I'll catch up with you on the next demo.